that's good and so we are live and i'm hoping there's more than two fucking people out there to be able to join us tonight for what will be one of the most i believe i, I, I think this is a moment in history actually ladies and gentlemen because what we're seeing tonight are two people that are renowned two people that are renowned um for being strong personalities two people that are renowned for being incredible talents and also two people that are renowned for being the biggest fucking irritants to many of you out there as well and i think that's great because if you're not being irritated that ouch factor that poke occasionally then you're not going to grow so tonight is a great opportunity and a great learning opportunity where I'm going to be putting questions that you sent me and also asking some of my own questions. But the one thing that I do want to say to you all is do make sure that you post any questions that you have as well. I'm just going to check I'm in the right group as I talk and people are just, <laughs> just check I'm connected. <laughs> well, I am connected. Right. Okay, I'm just going to give it a minute because I just want people to know that we are here and that we are live. So this evening, what we're going to be talking about are many things ranging from clinical issues to business issues to also professional issues as well. And like I say, any questions that you have, please do let me know. Do you know, guys, one thing I'm concerned about with this is I don't think I think Facebook have stopped pushing my feeds out, you know. Seriously, seriously, I do. Possibly, I think they. Do, I think they do sometimes because this just can't be right. It's like naught. <laughs> I know, fucker wants us. I'm it can't keep... be right because I know for a fact I've just had messages of people saying that they're going to be watching. So yeah, I know, but it's saying zero. Oh, hang on, we've got one. Right, maybe they're starting to come in. Yeah, in fairness, it's only it's just up. turned eight o'clock on my laptop. It has only just turned eight o'clock. So, yeah, I'll do a bit of waffle bollocks. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're starting to come in now. That's good. That is good. And if you're watching this on catch up, uh, that's absolutely fine too. Although, I'm going to delete the fucker soon. So, make sure you watch it before it gets deleted. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, can I make an announcement? Because none of you have probably heard that Alex William Smith runs the elite hypnosis boot camp and you and everyone out there has probably not heard of it have you now alex can you tell us what the is there a link for that is there a, a website address because i hear before you give it out i hear incredible positive things about it in fact dino was messaging me the other day saying it is All incredible right. value with a very deep uh deep uh what's the word i'm looking for deep layers of content so what is the link if people want to check it uh well in a nutshell because i keep it dead short it's simple as this there's nobody on the planet anywhere guaranteed and my money's where my mouth is if you can find anyone who offers you more actually usable and actionable in the real world training but for that matter if you can find someone who offers you more shite um even i give a full money back guarantee the, the, the fact is there's nobody on the planet offers more information and there's people that are blatantly breaking advertising laws, which is frankly, well, it is illegal, but I'm not that petty to have reported them. But I am going to mention names. Fuck it. Um, there are the likes of Rantney Jack Quinns, uh, your Mike Mandels, your Stage Hypnosis University. Now, the Stage Hypnosis University claims to be just the biggest online resource for Stage Hypnosis stuff. Don't even come remotely close to what's in the boot camp um mike mandel um great guy watch his interview i did with him on uh, uh hypnosisweek.com nothing against him as a person or his, his training's brilliant as well but the claim that they have like the biggest online virtual library or maybe that was the jack quinns who said that anyway the point is they all make out about this big virtual online library not even remotely close to what's inside the elite hypnosis well camp. listen listen alex that that is, of course, your opinion. You would say no, 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 no. You will. It's not an opinion. Exactly. Like, I'm the only one who's got the balls to put the money no. where the mouth is, not for a this... full one year, one hundred percent satisfaction, money back guarantee. Okay, and that's great. That's great. But obviously, those those people you've mentioned may have a different opinion to you. 
However, I fully well, they've, had, they, they've had all for I a year. Fully I, mean, acknowledge, and they I fully acknowledge that you, your elite boot camp is very well thought of and it's helping many, many people. Tonight, what I want to do, guys, is get straight into it. And these two guys who are, I just love them. And I know a lot of you lot out there feel a bit ouched when you see them type or you feel a bit poked or you kind of take your ball home because you feel too threatened. Well, listen, I say get ballsy and I say listen to these guys and maybe you can learn one or two things this evening. I'm going to start with you, Gary Turner. Is hypnosis real? Did you hear me? Can you hear? It oh. really helps if you unmute your mic. <laughs> I'm unmuted. So I'm, I'm un it was me. Can you, <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, okay. That's <laughs> cool. I'm, I'm going to start with you, Gary. Yeah. Is hypnosis real? Hypnosis is real because it's a term with various definitions. Uh, yes, it is real for sure. Uh, although I've got to be honest and say that a lot of people don't actually use hypnosis because all they've been done is trained in relaxer therapy. Uh, so I, I subscribe to the phenomenological control model. Uh, what does that what does that mean? Okay, so that's phenomenological. That, that sounds really grand words, but what does it yeah, mean? Yeah, you try and I say it. Really, <laughs> I want you to be really practical about it because people like me don't understand words like that. Yeah, so phenomena. Phenomena are observable happenings and subjective experiences. So that's what phenomena is. So phenomenological control is control of observable happenings uh, and uh, uh, the subjective experience that a person has. Uh, you combine phenomenological control with a sense of ease and non-volition, and that is what hypnosis is. It's got nothing to do with pre-talks and inductions and walking down steps or relaxation, eyes closed or anything. It is just straightforward phenomenological control in a way that happens with ease uh, and uh, a sense of non-volition. It just happens. Um, therefore, it's not a passive process. So obviously, uh, if I was going to be working to hypnotize you and to use hypnosis with you, with you collaboratively, uh, I'm not inside your brain. So I've got to guide you to enter uh, uh, hypnosis to create that phenomena. It's the artful application. Uh, it's no, we, we, we don't create anything new. It's, you know, it's, it's, we're all capable of, of having this skill. Um, and it basically works at the level of perception. To simplify behavior, we're stimuli response machines. You know, I kick you in the shin, you go, ouchie, and that, that hurts. You'll respond to that stimuli. You get too hot, you'll take your top off, too cold, you put your top off on, a top on, dry mouth, you'll, you'll drink your coffee. So we've got stimuli coming in. The incoming input is sensation. We then have the process of perception where we process that. We, we attach our memories to it. We have expectations as to what will happen as a result of it. And that then dictates our, our actions. So hypnosis sits at the level of perception within our, our cognitive layers, if you will. So Alex, it's okay, phenomenological okay, control. I'm just, just going to pause you there, Alex. Uh, Gary gives a very, um, how would I describe it? A very well-read explanation of hypnosis in that it works. What should it's we wrong, but it's well-read, yeah. I mean, if you want to read shite about phenomenological bullshit, there is a section on it in the Elite Hypnosis Bootcamp. There'd have to be for it to be the most complete um, training package on the planet. But well, after you've studied that section, it will clearly say that the vast majority of this is complete, not a claptrap, uh, written up by scientific types who are uh, full of self-importance and, frankly, have never fucking hypnotised anyone in the real world. Um, How do you know hypnosis, that? Do, no, no, no. You, you made a claim there. How do, do, you know do, that? do a Google search on the people who've written the frigging papers. <laughs> Find any proof of them having actually cured somebody's phobia in the real world or having done a stage hypnosis show. They haven't. Simple. Except one, very two maybe rare people on the planet. Generally speaking, they haven't. And the, and the real world of hypnotizing people, the tr harsh, harsh fact is hypnosis does not exist except in the mind of the believer because it is nothing more than suggestion. Simple as that. 
And whilst on the one hand, throwing words around like perception is correct, perception is involved, uh, the fact is, as a hypnotist, if you want to use that title, doesn't matter what title you use, it doesn't matter if you call yourself a bloody fucking Tibetan head tapper, follow me eyes, wiggly waggler, whatever, it doesn't matter. If it comes under the umbrella of complementary alternative medicine, holistic health, alternative medicine, or any other winky wanky tree hugging type title you might fucking want to give someone to sell a course. The fact is, it only works when it works because of suggestion uh, kicking off the placebo uh, effect, which then in turn, assuming you've got everything in place right, triggers the placebo response, which are two very different things. People tend to get them mixed up and band around one. It's love it. The other. Gary, 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 is there anything Alex says there in his description and response to you that where you think actually he's got a point? And there is some crossover between what you believe hypnosis is and what Alex believes hypnosis is. In part, yes. For example, if I give you a classical hypnosis suggestion, we are working on the level of suggestion. However, research shows that hypnosis is more than just suggestion. Um, no, it doesn't. It's more than, no, it doesn't. More name, like... name one single paper that's credible that actually can't be pulled apart on the key thing that all the ones that apparently say there's more than suggestion are fucked up in one major way but the way they've done their studies or whatever in itself fundamentally has got inbuilt non-verbal suggestions it's impossible to let, do we'll scientific let, 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 I think we'll let Gary answer suggestion. It. yes i think we let gary answer that <laughs> So yeah, so it's there, there's there's a raft of literature showing quite clearly that hypnosis is more than suggestion. Now, no, there isn't. I do agree. I there do isn't. Agree. Name Alex, some then. No, no, no. Name some. Give people yeah, some yeah. resources to look at, and then yeah. they can pull it apart in the way that I've just mentioned, and they'll be able to because they'll see that when they read it, it's glaringly done uh, all the experiments in a manner that itself has got inbuilt suggestion. So therefore, any outcomes. Have actually been gained in a manner where suggestion is present and impossible to rule out. So it's bullshit. Alex, Alex, Alex I'll be the one asking the questions. So, Gary, <laughs> suggestion is note, a part of it. And that note, you, you explain. Correct. You just said suggestion is a part of it. Exactly. The biggest part, it's all in everything, except for the deluded person who wants a different outcome, who would be focused on finding a different outcome, which is what happens with science and medical testing ever since the day bloody John D. Rockefeller teamed up with Andrew Carney. My, my question to you, Alex. Alex, my to... question to you is, how hmm. many research projects have you actually carried out? Research projects, I'll tell you what. Because you've, you've given a huge global sort of indictment. I've done better of, research of projects because research projects are shite. And yes, I'm saying that. They're absolute shite. You know what's more important to me? The fact that in the real world, under test conditions, without it, basically in a manner that's breaking the law, but because uh, there was the journalistic uh, legal argument afterwards, unfortunately, nobody decided. <laughs> charges uh but in a context that at the time was basically breaking the law hypnotizing people without their knowledge or consent of what was going to take place and then getting them to reveal their computer passwords and stealing money out of their bank going and working on projects that ultimately culminated in people taking a gun and shooting somebody and genuinely believing they'd assassinated that person but having no memory of why they did it doing things like that in the real world beats hands down anybody locked mm. in a fucking room with people uh who have got inbuilt suggestion hands down not a single one of those people um could come remotely close to doing a fraction of you know most of those people who've written these papers anyway you know what most of them say that the stuff that I've done in the real world for the past 33 years can't be done. Just and, like 1990. Yeah, and, and there is no doubt, Alex, you have done lots of stuff in the real world and you're very talented and excellent. I want Gary now to have the space to answer the question and have a little time for him to explain about the research studies that he believes validate the existence of hypnosis. Gary. Okay, so well, th there's a raft of them. Do you just need to look at Zoltan Deans, for example? 
Um, that's why I, I push for people like you, Steve, to go to the UK Hypnosis Convention because it has a huge scholarly tilt. So you can actually see, speak with, listen to, uh, discuss with actual leading researchers in hypnosis as to what's actually happening in the world of research. Now, I agree a lot of the hypnosis research is pretty shoddy. The reason being is they're testing a relaxation response rather than hypnosis. The only way you've got hypnosis is if you create created phenomena, the uh, observable happenings or subjective experience. If you haven't, you have not got hypnosis by definition. So a lot of it is just testing a relaxation response. Um, but the modern research, the last 20 years, has got better and better and better and clearly demonstrates that things can be done with hypnosis more than just suggestion. For example, the classic Stroop test, oh, which is bullshit. where, a, which is where a, a, a word comes up on the I screen, for that, example. A word comes up on the screen, uh, like green, but it's in red. And you've got to, uh, whichever way the methodology works, you've got to either say what the word says or say the colour that it's printed let me, in. Let me just come in there, Gary, though. And I, I, I want to ask you this bit, because I, I... The Stroop I'm, test I'm, is the I'm, biggest pack of shite as well, the way right, they do I, it. I do it on stage regularly with people. All it if you take someone and show them the words, they're getting the mental rehearsal. No yeah, hypnotic we're induction gonna come required. To you, we're going to come to you, but can you allow me to in, in, speak to Gary? Gary, one of the things that I often have an issue with with respect to studies mm. is that often, obviously, it involves people. Mm. And it, please excuse my very basic way of explaining it. And, and, and I read it, and I love what I read, because it tells me everything I, I, I want them to say. However, Alex often mentions, and I will mention him here, credit him here, because and I agree, I, I tend to agree on this, is people are getting attention, the Hawthorne effect. And I wonder to myself, do they not, do the results not come in like they do, simply because people are getting attention? No, because that gets screened for. That's a confounder which is designed out of good research. So it's quite quite clearly does happen. Um, however, that's why you have control groups. That's why you have placebo <laughs> as well. Uh, so hypnosis is demonstrably better than placebo. Uh, placebo being an uh, well, actually, Alex, can I ask you for what your definition of placebo is? Because in various fields, and even within fields, definitions vary. So can I ask you for what your uh, definition of placebo actually is, please? Depends on the context it's being used in, but generally speaking... Well, you say uh, hypnosis is any, placebo. Yeah, you so in, in that context. Let, let, yeah, let him answer. Any important seeming ritualistic process or any prop, accessory, tool or anything that is used pursuant to uh, guiding, nudging, manipulating. Some might want to use the term hypnotizing, but fact is hypnosis is just suggestion, towards a expectancy that this bullshit important seeming ritualistic process props, um, which will be called the totem effect, if we want to use winky-wanky titles that we don't need to, but, you know, some people like to do that to make themselves look good. I mean, you know, the, the, you know, um, the fact is the placebo is present with things like the Pygmalion effect, where you transmit the fact you believe that the client's going to get better, so they believe themselves more. The placebo um, effect, not response, but effect, is the with the guillotia effect, which is triggered by the Pygmalion, because once the person starts to believe in themselves, and I'm only giving these fancy titles just because apparently that's what you're supposed to do to look like you know what you're on about. 33 years hypnotizing people around the world, more than the vast majority of people in the industry, apparently, uh, doesn't count for anything. Um, the Galatea effect is uh, knocked in, and then also the Hawthorne, which is observation. <laughs> Totem effect can be the bloody audio CD or USB stick you give them to listen to after the session. Um, environmental shit like your diplomas on the wall. All of it, every single thing from your correctly designed website that is such that they see shitloads of social proof on, word to the wise, either take down garyturner.co.uk or redirect the domain name to your uh, Gary Turner performance one. 
Gary Turner performance looks nice. Gary Turner.co.uk looks shit. Uh, redirect it because um, you're not going to get clients off Gary Turner.co.uk. If you do, the fucking placebo is going to be well low. Wow. Okay, the other, the other website, the yeah. placebo will be high. Alex, it's Alex, all one. Alex, no, I will interrupt. You have got to let him speak. So, Gary, your response to Alex's description of placebo, which, yeah. to be fair, if I was coming one down on, on I, I kind of agree with Alex on this. But, and, you, and, and the thing is, you might as well, but articulate it in a different way. Your response. Okay, several things. Firstly, placebo, because you've got to work with someone's definition of placebo because it, it varies. So placebo is generally thought of as an inert substance, uh, a sham procedure, an inert happening that has no effect on that person, which is a bit of a, 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 a mute subject anyway, because even a sugar pill has an effect in the body. Hang on, hang on. An inert procedure. What the fuck does that mean? Doesn't do anything. <laughs> Quite simply, rather than give you a paracetamol, I'll give you a sugar pill. Right. Yeah. So it works, therefore, on the level of an individual's belief. And placebo, uh, the way I think of it is uh, placebo can be thought of as uh, the power of positive belief, the expectation that something will happen. However, conversely, and also involved, so Alex speaks about placebo, hypnosis being placebo. But on the same count, it's also using the nocebo effect. Nocebo, uh, we can think about the power of negative belief. Think of a nurse injecting a needle in your arm, for example. When she gives you a placebo, she might go, oh, this is going to be really interesting sensation. It's probably tickle a little bit. Now your expectation is just going to tickle. It's going to be quite nice. It's going to be good for you. A nocebo effect will be this will just feel a little sharp prick. <laughs> That's me, sharp prick. Um, <laughs> um, and then you're going to get the pain effect. Does that make sense? So if, because uh, Alex took the placebo effect into the therapeutic uh, uh, level, but then we've got the therapeutic relationship. We've got placebo as part of it, for sure. We've got the removal of nocebo. We've got to allow for natural reversion. Literally, some shit gets better on its own. Yes, I am a potty mouth. And the last bit is the true magic of sessions, which we should all be looking to do more than everything in the first four which is the application of science, how we actually change uh, um, someone's behavior. Uh, we can simplify that with Hebb's law, formerly known as neurons that fire together, wire together, but more correctly, neurons that sequentially, uh, that neurons that repeatedly sequentially fire together, strengthen in that sequential firing. Okay, let me, so let me hold you wire there. in the brain differently. Yeah, let, me, let me hold you there. I'm gonna to go to Alex for the final comment on this question, Alex. Or as people who don't want to look like the reverse uh, holiday textbook would say, and people have done for years, even before Donald Heap got tagged with Heap's law, use it or lose it. It's as simple as that, because the opposite applies as well. If neurons aren't firing, they, they also come apart, as the um, studies show, if you believe in the fucking studies. Nocebo, by the way, can also be used in therapy with the benefit of making the person feel a side effect on purpose so that they, when they feel the side effect that you warn them may happen because they feel the side effect it to them enhances the belief that everything else that you've done is going to work um but Alex, the key is authority Alex, authority I, is placebo yeah, is okay, authority. Okay, I, I need to close this one down but my final question to you alex is in in a give me a summary answer to why should we as hypnotherapists not believe in the studies? Well, well I, I never said you shouldn't. If you want to go and uh, spend time looking at them all and you end up deciding that they mean something to you, then good luck to you if, A, you want to waste time doing that, um, when at the end of the day, it's bullshit. You cannot remove suggestion from a clinical or scientific study. And the results, you know, they say, oh, we've got these ECG um, fucking brainwave pattern things proving X, Y, Z. Bullshit. If you do studies on those machines, the people who created them in the past have slipped up in interviews and admitted they don't work the way people say they are. Incidentally, in regards to Donald Hebe, what's more interesting about him than his neurons that wire together is looking at the work he did on the peripheries of uh, MK Ultra with um, sensory deprivation and brainwashing. 
which uh, it, there's far more to be learned from that that's of use to hypnotists who want to get rapid results for people. Okay, let, let, me, let me close this one down. That's, the first, that's only the first question, ladies and gentlemen. Can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine? Um, and you'll get into very passionate kind of perspectives. Uh, and I emphasize in big, bold, capital letters, the word passionate. Oh, Steve, yeah. can I just say, Stroop test very quickly. The Stroop test thing, right? I've used it on stage many times. The fact is, if you take somebody who's never seen the words before and order them up, they get confused. It's for people in the boot camp, it's in the confessions of the hypnotist video set where I demonstrate teaching and you've got printouts. And they will get confused because seeing the word red written in green and they're told to say the word, not the colour, or they're told to say the colour, not the word, and it's confusing as fuck. But you know what? Once they've done it once and they're pre-warned, if you use the right phraseology, no, no formal hypnotic induction required whatsoever, you know what? They automatically get a much better result the next time. Let's, um, go, to a, let's go now to a general question, uh, which is not really an argument between the two of you. Um, and I'll go to Gary. What frustrates you most about the hypnosis uh, or hypnotherapy profession generally? Um, the uh, A lot, unfortunately. Um, firstly, the, the, the lack of uh, wanting to... So, okay, uh, performance is based on edge work. You find the edge of your ability. Yeah, I want you to be... Safely Gary, exceed Gary, it. Gary, yeah. Gary, do me a favour. I want you to be more... Um, what's the word? I want you to be more tabloid with your answer. Yeah, uh, yeah this is what I'm doing. Your, this is what I'm doing. In your, let me finish. In, your, in, in terms of the profession, your frustration with the profession, is it, for example, that not enough people understand the research and they need to, which is where you may come from. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for very bullet point, say it as it is answers rather than theory. Well, the theory is part of it. So, you know, going back to edge work, edge work is where you find the edge of your ability and then you continually move that edge. What happens is people aren't I'm talking about themselves. edging. They're not yet. Yeah, yeah, behave, fella, fella. Behave. Uh, so people aren't pushing themselves. They're not learning. They're not developing. Um, there's a lot of the same rubbish that's just churned out. Um, the vast majority, I mean, it's, it scares me how many, um, you know, it's, hypnosis is a state of relaxation. If you've got that on your website, if your governing body, membership body, uh, says hypnosis is a state of relaxation, get rid of that straight away because it's not it's got enough active alert um if i if i've got someone uh, i'm hypnotizing them during fighting when i'm actually yeah. sparring with someone or, or grappling and rolling with someone and I actually take them into hypnosis during that process okay. so, so what, um, let, let me just let me just pause because i'm you've got to allow me to manage the time both of you so so you're saying uh it frustrates you i think you're saying it frustrates you because people think it's all about relaxation that's why no, no, it's, it's, it's the lack of people pushing themselves to learn and be better at what they do Right, okay. So that, that's your biggest frustration. Alex, what's yours? Um, I'd say a couple. Firstly, one, it's similar to what Gary said, except I, I think a bit more pinpointed in so much as, whilst I would agree that not all hypnosis is a state of relaxation, I'll come back to that in a minute, and that it would be better to say that hypnosis can be a state of relaxation, but equally in the right context, it can be a state of heightened awareness, I think Gary was saying for fighting, that's more appropriate. But for a lot of things, members of the public for habits, addictions, fears and phobias, the bread and butter stuff, already have a preconceived idea that it is relaxation, that it is some kind of sleep type thing like the scene on the films. So do you, A, tell them they're wrong and make them feel bad for being wrong? Or do you, B, provide them with the magic wand that they want so they genuinely feel zonked out of it? So at the end of the session, they come round and they've been asleep, snoring their head off, and they go, wow, I didn't hear a fucking thing, and that they believe the miracle's taken place and their life has changed. Well, you know what? For the best part of the past 33 years, that's what I've done with close to 50,000 people. And I offer a full money back guarantee, but only two people in 33 years have ever needed a money back. Alex, money Alex back. yeah, I'm going to disagree with you. I, I don't. Well, you can I, do. I, I will do. We're amongst friends. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, we are. <laughs> right? I did really shit work when I was doing relaxation. And now my results, which are on the whole, they're not 10 out of 10 but they're much more nearer 10 out of 10. Since well, that's, I stopped, that, 
that's you. Relaxation. Yeah, that's not the relaxation, though, is it? That's you, the delivery, your state of mind. You as the authority figure. Um, I recently interviewed Dr. Steve Beerman, author of uh, Healing Beyond Pills and Portions, one of the best books on suggestion you'll ever read. And he, too, agrees with me entirely that it's just authority and placebo combined with suggestion. That's the key to everything we do. Anything else is just... Let me just go back to Gary. I just want to go back to Gary to say, Gary, if there was one thing you'd be advising people tonight to learn more of, I know that's kind of a sort of odd question, I guess. There's lots of things. But if there was one thing, what, what would you say to the audience tonight to make sure they're on top of? The various structures of behaviour. For example, each one of our behaviours. Uh, so say, for example, we've got the emotion of anger. There we are going through life quite happily. And then there's something that's a personal rule break, which then gives us the response. So there's a temporal, there's a time phase into it. If this, then that, then this, then that. Learn the basic structures of behavior, because when you learn the basic structure of behavior, then you can be really artful in your work and nail it with your clients quite quickly. Um, for example, um, if you're working relaxation with anxiety clients, um, they may be fine in your therapy room or monged out when you expose them to something because their body's relaxed. So they can't have the anxiety response. But then going out in the real world, when they're yeah. walking, when they're moving, suddenly the stimuli is different and their body's already moving, they're already tense. Does it cross over to the rest of the, the, the person's life? So in fact, with anxiety clients, I want them actually to get the response in the real world. I don't want them monged out because you don't move through life in a monged out state. I want to get the appropriate response to stimuli. Okay. Uh, by the way, everybody, let me let me just say that if anyone wants to visit Gary's website, www.garyturnerperformance.co.uk. Am I right? On dot com. Dot com. I'll dot just com, say yeah. that again. Um, Gary Turner Performance dot calm we're going to turn now to marketing because i can know i not one... answer that question as well oh, the sorry, one you just asked. sorry everybody that that i need i need a yellow card for that and that's really bad of me because i forgot i answered to you sorry alex my mistake go ahead okay short and sweet uh i don't disagree with what gary just said on that one my, my only thing that in fact i fully agree with it Fuck me. except for one <laughs> Except for one thing, you shouldn't, if you've been taught right in the first place, you shouldn't need to look into those things more. Because if you don't understand that all problems that every human being ha has, whatever they are, are all caused by one of the certain psychological pillars that I talk about in the free video that you can get at ultimatehypnosiscourse.com. You don't have to put any email address in it. They're on the page. It's not a data harvesting thing. Just go and watch the four-hour video. And that will teach you more than you probably got taught in your entire hypnotherapy course, costing you hundreds, if not thousands of pounds. When you understand what's in that four hour video, everything that Gary just said automatically will be dealt with in the session with the client anyway. Whether you choose to deal with it in a relaxing manner, uh, a peak performance manner, doesn't fucking matter. If you dealt with the emotional underlying things that caused the issue in the first place, balance them out so it can never cause a problem ever again in the future and there won't be symptom substitution or anything like that, then that is how you get long-lasting results in one session. And that's what I teach people. And if you weren't that taught is, that, demand a that refund is, from... That is elite hypnosis boot camp ladies and gentlemen because i'm sure no one has heard of it so you must check it out because the reports in all seriousness are pretty hot G gentlemen we're going to turn to marketing now because one of the things that is a struggle for people quite often is marketing i'm going to start <coughs> with a bit of a controversial question and it may be tongue in cheek from gary gary you described alex's marketing as trashy yeah, I find it trashy. It's a subjective experience. Uh, there's a, you know, it, it's, it's like plug every five seconds. Um, no, don't get me wrong. It's, uh, 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 it, you know, people need to, to earn their beans. Uh, but I find I find it trashy where it's just like plugs, links, plugs, links, plugs, links, plugs, links. Are you saying are you saying it's it's trashy because there's too many links? Too many links. Than, in the links. And it's constant. Um, for example, the amount of plugs that Alex has given already 
when it's time where it could be put onto the points that we're here to discuss. Does that make sense? So I'd, I'd, I'd call it trashy for that. It takes away from imparting knowledge, for example. Alex, do you mark it too often? You can never mark it too often. Anyone who suggests otherwise clearly um, wasn't in a financial position to retire before the age of 30, paying for their own home outright with cash, walking in with a briefcase and going, there you go, thanks, give me the deeds to that property. All bought for how? By plugging, marketing, marketing, advertising, publicity and promotion. Something you should be doing all the time. And if you're not, as Marshall Silver tells you, uh, is trainings. Then basically, there's only one reason to not market all the time. That's if you've got a crap product that you're ashamed of. When you've got the best agree, hypnosis training in that. the world, I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak. You tell I people. Agree. I agree with that, but but I think what Gary's saying is your love of linkage is trashy. You you throw them out too much. Can you can you? He's, a, he's, he's entitled to that opinion. Yeah 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 yeah. And and I think I've got, I'm going to be honest. I think a lot of people think that, right? I I do think that. And I can understand where Gary's coming from on that, right? You can comment back on that now when I've just asked you. I'm going to ask you another one. In your opinion, Alex, what what would you say to people out there watching tonight to help the market? What do they need to do more of or less of? Stop giving a shit. 15 letters. Two words, 15 letters, okay? Get a pen, write this down at home. The first word is other. O T. H E R, other. And the second word, well, it can be one of two because it still fits into the uh, 10 letters. But H Y P N O T I S T S, hypnotist, or it could be T H E R A P I S T S. Stop giving a shit what other hypnotists or other therapists think, say, or whatever, unless. You're taking notice of someone who has got provable long-term success and skills uh, in an area that you want to learn about, then obviously that's slightly different. But once you are in a position that you uh, have learned properly, you are fully confident and competent, which means you're not going into groups asking how to deal with a client that's coming late, later in the week. Because if you were taught properly, you would never need to ask how to deal with any issue. If you understood what hypnosis was, how it truly fucking worked, and you actually were a hypnotist, confident and competent in what you do, you'd never need to go on a bloody forum or group and go, I've got a client coming later in the week. I've never seen a client for this issue before. What can I do? Well, you know what that says to me? It says the person should go back to wherever they train with and demand a fucking refund. That's what he says to me. Um, and I, th yeah, I, I think I agree. Can I send I you a relaxation think, tape? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the one thing that really gets my goal. People Listen. getting ripped off to go on a course, then an advanced yeah, yeah, course, you, you a know, master course. Point time and time again. But my voice will get louder as well. I think you both agree on this, actually. Okay. Generally, yeah. Generally speaking, Generally. I think I actually think we have some agreement there. I really do. I really like what Alex says there, actually. And it empowers me to know that actually I'm all right, because I do respect both of you boys. And when Alex says, do not worry about other activists, be yourself, show your own conviction. I 101% agree with him. And those that run off, taking their ball <laughs> home because they can't take it or they can't learn from it, well... They're not very good influencers, in my opinion, right? So I, I actually agree with that. And I think the message to everybody that's watching is, do not be afraid to show your conviction, show your opinion, show, you know, whatever, share it. It's not a problem. And the good news for you two is the audience numbers are going up. Right. <laughs> um, we are gonna... just Just on that one, you haven't asked me what makes good, good marketing. Okay, now I'm not doing my job good tonight. Go on, then. <laughs> so for me, it's really straightforward. It, it depends on what people want. Not everyone wants to put beans in tin. Uh, I want to help people. Uh, when Alex was busy retiring at 30, I was a professional athlete winning world titles. People have different life paths. So I don't do any marketing, really. Really, really tiny amounts because I get the clients that I need. And I get the clients that I need by getting good client results. They tell more clients, I don't have to do any marketing. They come to me. It's as simple as that. So from my side, my, my element of marketing is doing good work and letting my work speak for itself. And that gets more, more people. Uh, why is GaryTurner.co.uk not updated? Um, because I, no one goes to it. 
I don't need people to go to it. Um, it's just, you know, static websites are becoming irrelevant now. Um, it's just word of mouth. Uh, yeah. So best thing for marketing is find the marketing that fits you and then learn what's effective for the marketing that fits you. We're all complete individuals. Yeah. One, I just want to come back to an audience mm. member who has said, <laughs> just make me laugh because I've got a sense of humor. Howard Cooper. It's lovely to see Howard Cooper in here. Um, he's saying, Alex, it all sounds to me like all training is bad unless it's Alex's. Now, allow me to comment on that. No, can I just uh, say, no, 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 no. I didn't say training's bad. I just said that 99.9% .9 recurring the training out there. And that's why I threw down a challenge over a year ago. And no trainers have the balls to take it up. So if you've got an issue, go to ultimatehypnosiscourse.com. Watch the interview I did with Greg Bornstein on Open Loops. Take up the challenge. You won't know because you can't. Because, yes, there's some great courses out there, but they're great on this element or this yeah, element. You, you, Nobody you've told offers us, everything. Yeah, you've told, us that many, you've told us that many times already. Mm -hmm. However, well, go and see, go and however, see what other people say. However, that went, then. however shh, I went on Alex's course, and I have to say, everyone, and I still say it was the best course I ever did. It is the best course I ever did. That's not because I'm blowing the smoke right up his oop or something like that. I got a lot from it. I learned a lot. I, I and, and the practice of it as well. It was outstanding that course. So um uh it, do, it it may come across like that and i i fully understand the perception of that what alex may be uh saying out there but actually the training was bloody brilliant 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 gary i want to ask you you are a very well-read person which i fully respect and admire right i can't understand why you have not even if alex alex may think you know all the science is questionable big time however yeah. Why have you never delivered a course on the application of science in hypnosis as a masterclass, dare I use that word? I've never felt the need to. Um, it's something that I could do. Uh, but as you know, I've been throwing myself into a real PhD, uh, actually been thrown into it. So, you know, I've been putting between 20 and 40 hours a week over the last three years into research my own PhD, uh, which is in the behavioral effects of repetitive head impacts in combat sport athletes. It covers every area of my work, including behavior, because I'm studying the base the origin of behavior, the mediating organ of behavior, the brain, and how behavior changes as a result of it. So it's helping me in every stage become a better therapist. Yeah, and I, I get that. I get I'm, that. I'm concentrating on that. Listen, listen, I, I, and I get that as, as part of, you know, that, and that's to be respected as well, of course. Mm. I, I actually think people would benefit, though. I, I've said this to you before. People would benefit from a Gary Turner course, one day masterclass on understanding the application, the, the science application of hypnosis. I know that I would. And, and is it yeah. something you'd consider doing in the future? It's something I've, I've relative. I've actually done something similar. So um, uh, on um, Gary Turner performance dot com. Sorry, shameless plug. Um, I've actually done that with a therapy protocol. I've broken down the science into the key elements so that you can actually work artfully in the therapy suite. You know what you're doing. You know, it doesn't matter what pops up, whatever random thing pops up, you'll be able to deal with it because you understand the basics of behavior and behavioral change. So I've kind of done that already. However, it's also for the, the level of the, uh, the science that you're talking about, it's kind of an in-depth thing. Um, and I'll actually suggest that you go and Adam, actually take Adam Eason's hypnotherapy training. He's seven years into a highly complex PhD uh, into self-hypnosis. Um, and he, he is even more a hypnosis science geek than me. And he can portray that really nicely. And his course is not one of these ones that I agree with Alex is absolutely horrendous. His one is it's in depth, it's detailed, it's research. Unlike a lot of the others, and I'm not mentioning any names uh, here. Um, it's it's actually current rather than based on models of 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. Uh, so if people want to learn more, get on that course. You, okay. you know, it'd be, it'd be absolutely Adam brilliant. Eason. Okay, yeah. let me let me now move on. Well, science, um, science-wise, I, I just said, yeah, yeah. 
Time transformation therapy course. It's in the boot camp. Covers all the science and why hypnosis works. With all the sources quoted. Why waste your time? You know. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to say you can visit Gary Turner performance.com and also look up the elite hypnosis boot camp as well where's gary gone i can't see him i'm just giving people an alternative to marketing plugs now (laughs) gentlemen listen i'm going to move on to the question that i think a lot of the audience are kind of thinking can you just ask that question (laughs) and i want it to be calmly as possibly answered Gary, should Alex rip up his doctorates? What doctorates? Tell me more about so, it. I thought you may say that, but explain. So there's been a thing in the uh, hypnosis unprofession of using uh, diploma mills and getting fake doctorates. Uh, which had been exposed, exposed by whoever it was that was running fake doctor at Blogspot. Every now and again, I get accused of it, and Austin gets accused of it. I think Steve Green got accused of it as well. None of us, as far as I know, which means it's not me. Uh, and quite a few, uh, you know, hypnothoughts is based on a lot of people and still promotes people who who have got these fake doctorates, the diploma mills. You know, it, doing a doctorate, doing your PhD is is quite an intense <laughs> intense work, and it's there to train someone to be uh, an expert researcher. That's the purpose of a PhD. It's creating new knowledge, filling the gaps. So when people buy a certificate and then use it in their marketing, uh, that is actually incorrect. So I've got a, you know, Alex agrees with me. It, it, that may, it his, may be, hang on, let me ask you, it may yeah. be incorrect, but it's it's legal and lawful. Hang on. No, not to buy. To buy buy something is not legal and lawful. I've never bought a doctorate. Okay, I'll I'll come to you. Let me finish. Back to Gary. Go on, Gary. Thank you. So, for example, Alex agrees that his Chelsea University doctorate he was scammed on. Um, uh, Anyone who thinks that that's all you need to get a PhD, there's a question all about that, that person's ethics anyway. However, his Universal Life Church, it's really funny when you actually contact them and ask them. Um, I've got a few statements from them. The degrees convey rank, title or status within the church. They do not convey academic standing or achievement. It would not be ethical to represent a degree as something other than what it is in order to obtain something to which you are not otherwise entitled. In no case would I include such information under the heading of education, nor as specialised training. And a further example, because I know you're a doctor of divinity, uh, which has its place inside a church. However, if someone no, with a doctor I've of divinity... I've actually got doctorates in psychology to... as well, mate. Well, well, not not Alex, recently. we're going to have a lot of say on this, honestly, I promise. Mm. Let Gary finish. Yeah. So if someone with a doctor of divinity were to don a white lab coat over surgical scrubs, drape a stethoscope around his neck while calling himself Dr. So-and-so, offering health screening, he would be engaging in fraud and contrary to the universal doctrine. Now, we work with basically people's minds. We work with mental health. Um, So technically, the the people who sold the certificate um, basically say it's fraudulent to be used in that context. ULC's honorary religious degrees are issued to commemorate your understanding of church principles and in recognition that you're the world's foremost authority on what you believe. And this is a way of selling certificates to raise money for the church. The CAP, so um, the Advertising Standards Agency and CAP guidance, um, CAP understands that it is likely to be acceptable for marketeers who possess a relevant PhD or doctorate, brackets, of sufficient length and intensity, close brackets, that's not an honorary degree, and that's not a certificate that's bought, to call themselves doctor, provided they use the suffix PhD to clarify the type of qualification they hold. So what you've got is you've got people actually doing real, correct, and they're arduous PhDs. They have the most brutal things on the planet. Trust me. Um, it's like just like you know, peer review is brutal. Um, and then you've got people who buy certificates. Okay. They okay. are not the same thing, and it's yeah. fraudulent to use them in any other. Ca- this is what the people who issued Alex's certificate say: is it's fraudulent to use them outside the church, basically. 
Right. Well, for a start, I'm as well done, Gary, but unfortunately... Hang on a minute, Alex. Mm -hmm. Right. Thanks, Gary. I want Alex now to have his airtime to explain his point and also respond, Alex, if you can, to Gary's statements. Short and sweet, this one. Uh, anyone watching, just go to magicalguru.co.uk because today I directed that domain name to my career resume where, where you can see my doctorates or well, the ones that I've actually got photographic images of because unfortunately the original documents don't exist anymore. Having been destroyed in floods years ago, which can be checked. Quite simple social media searches. Plenty of people know I was flooded twice over the course of four years. Uh, stuff destroyed, but photos exist of some of, and notice I'm saying just some of, even though you're going to see loads of them at uh, magicalguru.co.uk. I have never purchased any of the uh, doctorates. We're, we're not talking about the Chelsea. I got scammed on that. Anything else, I never purchased. Anywhere that they were obtained from, any receipts clearly show I made a voluntary donation to a registered religious institute church. Fact, of which I'm an ordained reverend with the Universal Life Church. And yes, I do have a, um, a PhD from them from the uh, late 90s. However, I also got numerous other uh, honoris causas religious degrees in the period of the late 90s to the late noughties um, from various other institutions, the California Church and Institute. Um, can't remember names. Magicalguru.co.uk rather than wasting time. They're all on there. You can have a look. Voluntary donations is not purchasing. Going to a diploma mill, a diploma mill, handing over money, buying a degree, is out and out illegal. A registered church as a religious institute is allowed to legally and lawfully issue honoris causes degrees. And as long as, and this is the bit that Gary's tried to portray differently here with the response from ULC, who've taken his question and answered the question he asked, but had they been asked a different question, as anyone being asked a question, they would answer the question they were asked perhaps differently, depending on the way it was asked. I put the link in the, uh, the, 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 the chat. Okay. okay. You can do the stuff on their website backs up what I'm about to say, but there's not just them anywhere. And that's the fact that an honorary causes religious degree issued is fully legal and lawful for use as long as you do not in any manner mislead people to uh, uh, any idea that it's anything other than honorary causes, part one, and part two, that you do not uh, have one saying upon it uh, that you have some area of expertise that you then pass yourself off as having that you cannot fully show that you have. Well, the fact is that magicalguru.co.uk, I have PhDs in psychology that are fully legal and lawful for use. I quite happily let anyone report me to the SA. You know what? They have done in the past. Guess what's happened? Well, they turned around and told me I shouldn't say certain things on advertising, but they didn't tell me I couldn't use my doctor title. Could I also point it out to them the fact that doctor, anyone can call themselves doctor anyway. It's not a protected term. And they didn't say I couldn't use the PhD. But you know why? Because an honorary cause us religious degree in the way I use it. Now, there's other people who don't have the expertise to back it up. But when it comes to psychology, I tied up psychology professors in fucking knots in their own classes over the years in universities. And as a result, they've gone and joined my boot camp. And boot camp members will know in the social group that there are medical doctors, there are psychiatrists, there are clinical psychologists who are members who all bow down and go, boom. I thought I knew about psychology. There are, there are. We're, 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 Alex, we're going into a different area now. So, um, so I can back up the way I use them, so it's legal. Alex explains his, well, he responds to you, Gary. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, to me, it sounds like he's right. And it's clearly <laughs> laid out in black and white in on my website. Of, in terms of, uh, in terms of legality, and I mean, I don't know about ASA. I mean, you know, whatever. But, ASA are not the law. They can just tell you to not do no, things. I know. That. I know. <laughs> in terms of legality, he's not actually breaking the law. Nope. Quite possibly he is, though, depending on the use of it. I'm not. I'm telling you categorically the way I use it, and anyone can see it, magicalguru.co.uk, it's not illegal, and for you to even intimate it is, it's defamation of character. If you do that after today's interview, 
I will seriously look at suing your ass off and Rupert Murdoch's paid me the compensation that's coming my way. <laughs> but the funny thing is on that, for defamation, uh, there's actually the Defamation Act. Uh, and if I'm, I hold an honestly held belief based on evidence, and I just put some cat guidance down that, there. That, 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 even also, your own that, issuing, you're even wrong your own that. issuing, even you're your wrong own issuing of the UCL. The I suggest, Market, I suggest the you get a better... I suggest you get a better solicitor because you haven't got an honest day how belief because I made it quite clear to you now on numerous occasions you've been tagged and provided with links to stuff that proves you're talking shy in context to me. You I'm might talk over a lot. Yes, because you're talking. What I have got. You're Let's talking get... complete and utter bullshit as you have done consistently. People, other people, what you're saying, it may apply to. But the fact is, the way I've used them is fully legal and lawful. And I have all the knowledge, expertise and experience to back it up in any court of law. Let me go to Gary yeah. now. Let, yeah, OK, Alex. Alex is any of your, can, let, can I let, ask what Gary, research you've carried out? Gary, Gary can yeah. you just let, okay. me, let me ask a question to you? Everyone's talking over me. So, 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 yeah, I'm talking now. So, Gary, would it be fair and reasonable for you to say that actually yeah you're probably right it is legal and it is okay it is okay within the law okay i get he doesn't like but it he, but he doesn't but, have to but, like it <laughs> alex let me finish but what what then you may quite rightly say is however in my opinion it is wrong it is unethical and i do not agree with it would you would you gary go to that opinion no that i've just described no for the reasons that i've given the issuing authority states it will be fraudulent to use it that way and i've provided the link and the cap and asa guide i'm not using it that way court. that's the point you're lying again what you said is not the way i use it so you are just lied again to everyone as you've done constantly for months they can go on facebook.com forward slash alex they can mute him when i'm talking Go yeah, on the Alex, Alex, and see the evidence. You're lying again. Go yeah, on. Alex, yeah, Alex, you have to let Gary speak. What, you even will, when he's lying through his teeth? Well, you listen to him and then you respond. Mm. And I know this points emotive and I get that. Back to Gary. And let's not interrupt him. Let's listen. Then I'm going to come to you, Alex. No, for the reasons given. The use of the degrees is given quite clearly by the Universal Life Church. It's all right. I've got plenty from other places than them. <laughs> but you haven't produced those. Yeah, I have. Magicalguru.co.uk. You've, really you've been tagged in them for weeks. Well, yeah, because but you blocked me, so I can't see anything there. Well, you um, could the other day. I tagged you again under them several days ago. Alex, so you, you, really, you really need to so, let Gary answer. That's the, answer way, the, way, the way that I would suggest is let people decide. What you've got is you've got people doing proper phds proper yeah, I, doctors, I know but we're, and we're, then you've got yeah. people that buy I, certificates yes i know that that that's not the question my <laughs> point is this is that and i guess what i'm saying for you guys is you can can you split the difference and kind no. of agree no no because no, i i, I, no, I no, disagree well, me, because no, well, for let, the evidence that i've given well let me finish and and, and the which is bullshit and the conclusion <laughs> b and the conclusion b that actually Within the context Alex uses that, it is not illegal, right? And always have I to. don't you may not agree with it, and that's fine. I mean I wouldn't use one as either, but and, and that's fine, unethical, etc. And, and you're right, people do work years like yourself to get a PhD. I agree with you, I fully respect that. But is there not this ground where you could actually come together and agree to different disagree? based on the reality that, I mean, I, I don't want to say for definite, I'm sure it is though, there's no law being broken. Again, I'd refer you to the two links that I've given in the first instance. And, and again, I'd that, say Gary's lying through his teeth. Me, yeah, Alex, today, Alex, that Alex, doesn't apply to the way I've ever used Alex, it. Alex, let me, yeah, you've got to let me out, ask, talk to Gary. And, and within that, the links, Gary, which is, which is the bit that Alex is doing that makes you conclude it's unlawful? Because he's using it in respect to various elements of marketing. 
and he has done for quite some time. Is that and as long as I as long as contrary, I can back up the contrary. way I'm using it, it's not contrary to anything. And nobody's got more knowledge and expertise of hypnosis on this planet. Yes, that sounds egotistical, the B. So I'd happily fight any court case about whether or not I'm what I'm using it is right or not. <laughs> I do well, help sorry. people with anger issues You're wrong. indeed. Yeah, I do. Well, I'm, angry. Yeah. I'm angry at somebody who constantly lies and sits there smiling, lying through their teeth. They've been exposed as a liar for ages. The evidence is out there in public on my Facebook wall in the photo. people albums. see and they can see if I'm lying or not. You, and you, yeah, they can see for themselves that you're a serial liar. Pop, by pop, 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 pop the link in because there's a lot of lies and defamation. I think, listen, boys. Uh, there is that you've this, made this, about this, me in the past that's on this, those screenshots. Yeah, but this, this says this, the this. person who brags about having a total disregard for UK hypnosis laws and has bragged on those screenshots about doing illegal street hypnosis because you weren't licensed or insured correctly to be doing it. The screenshots are all there on Alex William Smith's Facebook. I just hope blood pressure isn't rising too much. <laughs> right, okay, boys, I think we're gonna on that one, we're never gonna agree. We're never gonna gain agreement, and Alex and you will always have your opinions. What you know, don't are. worry in due course, he will have to agree. It's called apologies in court when it gets all there. right. Okay, okay, fine. Would you ever run a course together? Yeah, I would. I actually like Alex, so I, I, I like him. Um, I, I, you know, as I said before, I think that the, the, the boot camp, which one was it that I got? Uh, Alex, elite, elite. Elite years ago. Well, elite. you had you had realistically about ten a boot camp that was in realism about five to ten percent of the size that it is now. Yeah, and my, comment got, my comment was honest. My comment was honest. It was a good course. Um, there, there's a heck of a lot, but it's very basic. Uh, I know that now because of the development that I've put in. I can I just say it, it, it was there, it is. but it's now like got over 2,000 hours more training videos and uh, all the stuff that goes with that. There's nobody on the planet offering a more advanced level, more scientific level or more complete hypnosis training, full stop, and I give a full money back guarantee on that. If anyone can find one, we get the money back. Simple. I would do a course if I could actually be free to speak. Go ahead. So you would run a course with Alex? Yeah, yeah. I think we, we could, we, you know, Alex nails what I would call the basics. I can provide the nuances. It can take someone, you know, from a really good level. I forgot so much hypnosis than you'll ever fucking know, pal. And that's <laughs> really hell. The people that you mentioned as mentors, most of them fucking learn off me anyway. The likes of your Jack Wins, they won't admit it, but I've got all the years of my private Yahoo news group and me asking me for advice and learning Alex, all the men Alex, and, out and passing Alex. it off as his own work. Alex, would you run a course with Gary? Not a chance, you know why? Because I've forgotten more than he'll ever know. Because I don't need to run a course with anyone. It's not a benefit to the student. The people that they could learn from, uh, another 20 people, experts in their area, are already sharing all their stuff on body language, such as Robert Phipps, uh, stress management, uh, health and safety from the only person with two royal charters for health and safety who's involved in the hypnotherapy profession. You can't get better health and safety training than that. It's all in the Elite Hypnosis Bootcamp at ultimatehypnosis.com. I want to I want to give some respect to our audience and just look at some comments, please. Um, have we got any questions, audience? Because I mean, they are commented, commenting. My favorite question of the evening: Would you run a court, would you run a training together? Howard Cooper says, and he's laughing. Uh, <coughs> would, would clear matters if we ask both how much morality and ethics plays a part in <coughs> James Brown mm -hmm. is saying. To both of you, the question, how much morality and ethics play a part in your business, Alex? Um, well, I'll let you perhaps make a comment afterwards, but here's the fact. There is nobody out there running hypnosis training courses who is more ethical, moral, 
teaches higher levels of health and safety, duty of care, all the laws, all the insurance, all the stuff so that people go out there and all the business compliance stuff as well. Because most hypnotherapy courses, you know, they don't even teach you the fact that there's laws relating to business that you need to abide by. And that if you don't, you may be invalidating your insurance. So whether it's to do with insurance matters, legal matters for stage or therapy, uh, ethics, safety, protecting yourself as a therapist by recording all sessions so you can't get accused of doing things you haven't done, blah, blah, blah. There is no stone left unturned in the boot camp and uh, you won't find anyone else teaching stuff to such yeah, a level that all you can confirm. I know, and I know I know. Alex is very electric tonight and, and passionate and all of that. And I, I do have to be fair here, and I'm fair to both you guys because I, I respect both of you, is I, I have always, in terms of your train, is training and his knowledge base in terms of set health and safety and all of that sort of stuff and and like what he said really has been second to none absolutely second to none but i also can say that with you gary in terms of the stuff you shared with me which has helped me loads in terms of the development of fatnosis for example you know so they won't be a course together would you send each other a christmas card <laughs> Right, let's just clarify some bit here, right? Okay. Yeah. I have one thing personal. Push hypnosis over here, right? Just a second. There is nothing on any personal level I have against Gary other than his continued lies. He may not like the fact of the way I use his chorus degrees, but the fact is... It's legal and lawful. He might not like it, and most other people using them are probably are not using them legally and lawfully because they haven't got the expertise to back it up. Um, other than that, law, as you may have noticed the other day, I posted the link. I didn't know at the time that uh, Gary already had because um, I still had him blocked at that time before I'd unblocked him. So I didn't know. I went and posted without without knowing he posted it. I posted without because I couldn't see it. I posted his um, lecture demonstration. At you did. Stop. We're very positive about Gary. Into the group. And I said, hey, you know, before Wednesday's <clears> event, <throat> I suggest everybody have a watch of this because he's good. Then I thought, you know what, better unblock him in case this bloody thing doesn't work. If you said it might not work, the video thing. And he'd already posted it, but it doesn't matter. I'd, I'd, I'd done it without knowing it had been posted. But, I, you know, I'll repeat it again. Go and have a look at that. It's a great video. Um, yeah, and I, I think I think just on the the um, doctorate stuff or PhD, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, Gary's making uh, sharing an opinion based on the facts he's received. Oh, uh, yeah, and Mark. Well, and yeah, exactly. Point. If you if you ask more clarity, if you sent them to magicalguru.co.uk, man, they'd probably edge the bets and said I shouldn't use it that way anyway to cover themselves. But I've had it clarified by the Californian Institute and Church that it's fine to use me a uh, PhD uh, that I've got from them in philosophy and that the others I've got um, in uh, various areas of psychology from another organisation. Fine to use. Can I, I, I can back it up. But that aside, do I use them for marketing? Yes, I do, because guess what? Here's the irony of it. Every time, and this doesn't detract from the fact that a lie is a lie, a truth is a truth, but every time somebody lies about me and the manner in which I use them, or every time somebody truthfully says, oh, he's twisting a loophole there, but yeah, he can just about get away with it where some couldn't because of you know, the expertise he's got. But to be honest, it's on that edge. Is it really ethical or moral? And they really hate it. It doesn't particularly matter because you know what they're doing? They're talking about me. And people go and find me and I sell more stuff. So frankly, I don't give a shit, really. Grouping on. Just out of interest. I, 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 I actually, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, and the, the, I don't know about anybody else, but all these guys <laughs> gets on my tits. I'm, I'm bored of it, really. But I know it's a big thing for a lot of you guys. Um. But I think what Gary's done is made uh, formed his opinion based on the facts he's received from the church or whoever it is. I don't bloody know. No, to explain sure. yeah. his opinion and, and his entire from to the that, source of the degrees that, that I've been presented with, the certificates that I've been presented with, and we all have an, a right to an opinion based on the facts we receive. That is true. Guys, now just clarify magicalguru.co.uk. I suggest you could have a look at that because you were you were tagged in it, you know, several days ago, and there's various others there. Why don't you? Would you? I've got another question, right? Just to be clear, I'll make it public. I will accept the apology in the state of 
I apologize for giving the impression that you may be breaking the law and misleading people in a fraudulent manner. However, I hate the fact that you are using in what I consider to be this is you, an ethical and immoral manner for marketing purposes, these honorary calls of religious degrees. Say that now and you will never get so I think, I think that's old, a fair and you point. might be in the shit in future, trust me. I think that's a fair point if Gary agrees it. But listen, with you two boys, I'm going to take that offline because I don't think it's appropriate to go on and on and on about that. So, um, <coughs> moving into the future, let me just check. I've asked questions from people that I received them. Oh, this was a good one. I think you'll both like this one and you'll probably agree. Are trainers out there just simply repackaging stuff to make a book? Do you want to go first, Gary? Depends on the book. <laughs> No, well, that, sorry, when I meant book, I meant money. Well, book, yeah. Um, they, uh, yeah, so without mentioning any any names or anything like that, the question from this person was, are trainers out there just simply repackaging things, calling it something else, so they can make some dosh? Yeah, with, with a few exceptions uh, that I've seen, uh, what I have looked at uh, has been 40, 50-year-old stuff regurgitated. So it's it's yeah it's not and 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 not complete. You know, as I said, that that you know my opinion is that the Alex's courses uh, that I've seen, which is only ten percent, so therefore not the most complete uh, amount of, of knowledge out there. So if I was bought back then, I'd be asking for my money back under your guarantee. But I got it for free, so that's okay. Um, but there's a lot of things which is just like regurgitation. I've been taught this, so I believe it, and therefore I'm going to teach it, repackage, remodel it put it out there um but there are courses out there and there are people who are actually looking to move forward uh in this field uh and it's the same in the field of psychology anything uh, to do with psychological work um th there's a lot of good courses out there but you do have to know what you're looking for it's not the matter of he who shouts loudest or he who sounds most important or he with the most followers you actually need to know, can you actually critically appraise this? You need some knowledge to start with to know whether uh, a course is actually of benefit and going to deliver what you want. Now, I would suggest that for, for some people, um, uh, some of these courses are quite simple and quite basic and will get you some basic knowledge. But enter that with a critical eye and start thinking, is actually what I'm being taught true? For example, um, I was trained uh, in NLP practitioner, master practitioner, went on to become trainer in NLP, and everything that I was taught, I actually looked for the origin source of it, and so much of it, it, it is absolutely completely incorrect. Um, and when I went into it and critically analyzed everything, um, that was actually a gold mine of knowledge for me. Because let's face it, the toolkit in NLP, it's got some real good uh, um, uh, efficacy, um, uh, effective uh, interventions. But when you learn actually the basis of it behind, you can be even more effective of your work. So enter everything with a critical eye. Okay, some so, courses so in, there in, summary, in, sum, in summary, you're saying, yes, a lot of it is repackaged, but there's, there's some that isn't. And there's some sure really you, good. Make sure you do your homework first. Alex. Okay, uh, in a nutshell, yeah, 99.9% .9 recurring, they're just repackaged. Even worse than that, even worse than that, they're just taking stuff and giving it a few bits, they throw it together to make a new recipe, protocol, call it what the fuck you want, uh, and they come up with a nice name so that they can sell you a logo and a certificate. That's what you're buying, really. Now, that isn't necessarily a bad thing if it works as a good marketing tool to attract clients but sadly a lot of them don't they're just for winky wanky ego best purposes there is is it rehashed yes and a lot more than the 50 odd years that gary alluded to there's nothing that i've encountered from anyone running any so-called uh, approved hypnosis training course that i could not find the root cause of uh, the root underlying source as it were in books from the 1800s on mesmerism and suggestive therapeutics which is why inside the boot camp i include uh, over 200 said books that are now out print out of copyright and a section that draws people attention to where the real Roots are of all the shit that other people are trying to charge. Okay, I'm bang. Ultimate hypnosis course. This has to be a nutshell, quick. 
That's it. Go to ultimatehypnosiscourse.com and see what other people say right, about okay. the training. Oh, okay. sorry, one thing. Go on my Facebook profile, click on photos, click on albums, click on Gary Turner's lies, evidence of, and look at what Gary said about the boot camp back then, because he's lying through his teeth again now. What he All said, phrased it much better. All Go and look at the comments. A PhD or doctor no. no, 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 no. He's, he's, he's just lied today about um, what he thought of the boot camp. Yes. His comments... Yes. We're very different. Alex, we've heard it many times, and, and that's cool. I'm sure you guys can sort this offline. Fire, I think this, I think right calm, this people. Actually, this, this, I like this question, and I've got two questions left, because the timing is great for this. Gary, what do you say to the people out there that you really irritate? Uh, <coughs> I'm just me. Uh, I, I, I'm not here to irritate anybody. Uh, I'm neurodiverse with ADHD. Uh, I, the devil is a detail. Um, for me, um, I see, uh, you yeah, know, I had a bad year last year. I, I sought out the, uh, the world's leading expert um, psychologist in working with neurodiversity and ADHD and neurodegenerative diseases. Unfortunately, he retired in March. Uh, I told him he's got to write a book. We'd have 45 minute sessions and then stay chatting for an hour or so afterwards, both doing CPD. Um, absolutely incredible. And uh, with, with, with that side, he says that I see the connectivity amongst the complexity. So just because I'll find something and I'll question something or I'll say, hold on, that doesn't tie up with this. That doesn't tie up with that. Um, and I'm very blunt and open with what I say. So, for example, uh, there was a certain uh, uh, hypnothoughts lady. Um, and part of the reason why I got kicked off hypnothoughts was um, she had asked, how can we improve the medical standard of hypnosis? And I said, stop using a fake doctor signal. <laughs> you're fine. Stop calling yourself doctor when you're not. <laughs> you <know>? <laughs> <For> <laughs> God's sake. Yeah. It's, uh, right. it, so so I, I find the connections between them. And okay. you know, so, I, so I don't just challenge back, people in what yeah, I say. I'm challenging myself. Coming back to the question, um, and give me one sentence, no more. What What do you say tonight to the people who would say, he really irritates me? Ah, everyone's got an opinion. Fair play. Okay, cool. Alex, I'm sure it'll be nice you... over a beer and have a laugh. But you know, I like it's... that. I like that. Alex, I think you irritate a lot of people, Alex, actually. What do you Good. say to them? Well, I tell you, well, before I say what I say to them, you know what really irritates them? Two main things that irritate them. Sorry, three. One is the fact that um, I, I kind of agree with George Bernard Shaw. Science is always wrong. It never solves a problem without creating 10 more. And in regards to that, I, I, I suggest that people go to scientificamerican.com, the website, and search for an article from July the 1st, 2021, which is headed, If You Say Science Is Right, You're Wrong, by Naomi Ores. That's O-R-E-S-K-E-S. -E -E I'll post a link after when I'm not because I can't do it right this second. And also an article from 31st of December 2021 called, Som again in Scientific American, called Sometimes Science is Wrong by Michael D. Lemonick. Read both of them in conjunction with the fact that I'm telling you it's impossible to eliminate suggestion, whether it's verbal or non-verbal. Yeah, you're, you're not... You, you're, that you're, pisses you're, people off. That yeah. rubs them up the wrong way. The second well, thing that rubs the them question. up... You're I am. This not. is what rubs them up. You're not well, it's the fact that I point out to them where they're wrong. That's what rubs them up. That's what, so I was answering, still the not answering the question. You're not answering the question. My question is, what would you say to those people that you get irritated. irritating, that you irritate? I, so can refer, I can refer them to a good therapist if they want or deal well, with that for them. I know, well, we've heard all that. But what about, what, you see, I mean... But, I, but if I we do, go to conventional psychology, they that, should look at what it is in themselves that they're irritated by. The mirror effect, as I, conventional psychology... I'm not shows. sure we're answering but, the question here. It is. They're irritated what? at themselves, not at me. No, 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 it's what not. I draw out of them that they don't like about themselves. Okay, That's so the problem. You're saying, so you're saying it's everybody else's fault. Okay. No, no, I'm saying that they haven't rectified their issues. Like most therapists, like Sick Mind Fraud said, most therapists are searching for answers to their own problems. If they'd found them, they wouldn't be irritated by anything I say or do. And my last question, and I've forgotten it. I forgot the fuck. Oh, I know what it was. I know what it was. <laughs> Very last question. Gary, what would you like to say to Alex this evening 
as your closing remarks. Uh, here we go. Uh, I would suggest that Alex's courses are quite comprehensive at a basic level and worth having a look at. Um, I do think there's one heck of a lot left to learn. Um, the answers that Alex has given tonight, for example, uh, demonstrate that there's 20, possibly 30 years worth of updating that can be can be carried out. Doesn't mean to say that the um, the value is not there in the courses, um, but there's a lot more out there. Um, I would actually like Alex to um, drop the trashy marketing. Um, I would like Alex to stop being controversial. Uh, and I actually think Alex is a nice guy. He just doesn't show it all the time. So, Alex, I actually like you. Uh, I know you're selling courses and your mission is to put beans in the tin. Um, but, you know, that, that for me actually degrades the industry. Um, it deserves to be degraded. 99% of the courses out yeah. there are shit. You get your chance, Alex. You said that many times, Alex. I'm coming to you. Have you finished yours, Gary? Anything else you want to ne say? Nearly. I was just, I mean, all, all the way through tonight, I've just been talked over. And what, what happens is, if you notice, I've stayed polite. Um, if you've noticed, uh, I've given Alex the, the ability to have his say. Uh, but I have been constantly spoken over. Uh, what would be good is to actually have had more time where I can impart more knowledge to help people learn for free. It's as simple as that. What finally, Gary, on, on that, and I am coming to you, Alex, I promise. If there was one compliment you'd like to give Alex tonight, what would it be? I like him. Yeah, but I, that that that's like Miss World. You know, I know. I like, <laughs> I like him. Um, what, what is no, it? What, what is the something a bit with a bit of a heavyweight compliment, as I call it? A heavyweight compliment. Yeah. So, so um, my, okay, my, my compliment, oh, my compliment you to you, my compliment to you, mm -hmm. and I have no problem giving people compliments, is that I really like and respect your depth of knowledge when it comes to science science okay some people will think it's cobblers however i really respect that and you are probably well you're one of the most well read on it right so that's my compliment to you what would you give to alex uh i would say he's got a lot more to offer uh than what he's allowed himself to portray tonight unfortunately it's hard for me to give compliments like that apart from i like him as a person uh, i don't like his past uh, I don't like the uh, portrayal uh, and the unprofessionalism that I think he projects. Well, okay. I actually like him as a person. Okay, okay, that, that's it's lovely. hard. <laughs> Back down to Alex now, please. Sorry, what was the question again? The oh yeah, question is in final comments. To oh yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, well, I'd just encourage everyone watching on Facebook to go to my profile, Alex Aitmitis. Click on photo albums. And look at the Gary Turner album and see what Gary actually said when he joined the boot camp. Bearing in mind that also what he's saying today, which is very different than he said back then. So either he was lying then or he's lying now. Can't be both. Um, that's point one. Point two, the boot camp is now at least got at least 2,000 hours more training videos in. Way more than that. So we can't possibly comment on whether it's just basic now. It isn't. That's why there's that guarantee there at ultimatehypnosiscourse.com that you can't find anything more comprehensive on the planet. If you think you can, try and do it, Gary. Be the first. Nobody's been able to take the challenge up in over a year, and they won't because simply, I've done the research, no one's got anything even remotely close in terms of content and advanced levels. And he said what I shared today was 20 years out of date. Well, A, we haven't got time, and B, if people go to that ultimatehypnosiscourse.com link, as I mentioned it earlier, there's a four-hour video there that's free where they'll learn more than they did in a the training course that they've taken previously anyway. And finally, 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 as I come to a conclusion, um, would you ever contemplate meeting for a pint? Yeah, because that's a totally... If it's nothing to do, if fucking hypnosis is pushed over that, there's two different things. A human being, who they are, has got no correlation, generally speaking. I know there's exceptions to the rule. Uh, well, calls me up on to I... 
yeah. not all. Not, yeah. Just because somebody's a twat as a human being doesn't correlate to mean that they're a twat as a hypnotist and vice versa. Unfortunately, our industry does have a number of people who fall into both categories to cloud the issue. Uh, I'd, but, love to, you know, I'd, love to, I'd love to wine and dine you boys at some point. Listen, you've been... It's cer it's keep him to it's that. Certainly, it's certainly been entertaining. It's certainly been alive. It's certainly been a, a very electric evening today, guys. And finally, may I thank these two guys, my guests, uh, for giving up their time this evening to, to entertain us and also to deliver their... Insights, there you never, you, and, you, and, you, and, no, and Alex. you never let me give my compliment. We're supposed to do well, the same. We, well, just get round to it. If you want, if you want to actually know why you'd want to, that's just my personal thing. But if you'd want to know, uh, every bloody scientific thing that frankly is uh, mainly useless in the real world, then there's nobody better to tell you and save you having to waste hours of your life. Looking it up, just ask Gary because he's already wasted loads of his life. And I it have up. to say, I have to say that is, and I want to stop there because I actually think that is really a, the most positive thing that's been said tonight. Is anyway, because we're both saying we've got I, do, I do actually mean it positively because he does know he does know them inside out. The we've got this massive difference, and I think it's cobblers. But I tell you what, if you want to know that science, he's the man. I'd like to thank my guests. I will invite both of them to put their details in the comments because these two guys are very talented. They have my utmost respect. Um, they have personality. And you and I, you as the audience and I, can learn from them. So thank you, boys. And good night. I'm off for a fucking fag. See you later. <laughs> you don't smoke! What's going on? Oh, no, I don't. <laughs>